India is an agrarian economy. As all of you know, that agriculture plays a vital role in providing the livelihood to the most number of people in India, right? See, for feeding the stomach of billions of people, so India is a 135 million strong, strong country. To feed such a vast um, volume or the, such a vast number of people, we have to produce more and more food. So for in India to feed so many number of people, the staple food is the rice. Rice constitutes the major you know, ingredient in Indian diets. So today's discussion is about the cultivation of rice. The, there is a one unique method of cultivation of the rice. This method is gaining more and more importance nowadays. Okay, we are going to discuss about that method of rice cultivation. Welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. So today we are going to discuss about the system of rice intensification or it is also called as the Sri method of rice cultivation. So before going into details about the Sri method of rice cultivation, let us learn some data about the rice cultivation, the total amount of food grains that is produced in India. Right? India so according to the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, so this is the recent data, 2021 and 22. This is the second estimate by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farm, uh, Farmers Welfare. According to this ministry's data, so India is has produced 316.06 million tons of food grains. That means for the first time we have crossed 300 million ton mark in India with respect to the food grain production. So out of this 316 million tons of food grains, 127.9 that is 128 million tons of you know the strength or the total volume of this 316 sorry this 128 million tons is you know given by the rice crop. That means rice constitutes around you can say nearly 50 percent of the total food grain production in India. Okay. So out of three 16 111 million ton comes from the wheat crop that means wheat and the rice these are the major constituents in the indian diet so if you compare rice and wheat between these two crops rice is again the predominant crop okay so that is why being the very important crop in india being you know enjoying the status of you know having the large area under cultivation rice related study becomes very very important for competitive examinations so then what is the method of three method of cultivation what is this a system of rice intensification where this concept originated and why this is gaining importance let's understand that so this three method of you know cultivation so it is a methodology that means you see it is a method of increasing the productivity of the irrigated rice see this is about the irrigated rice okay so there are different types of rice cultivation there is a wet cultivation, there is a dry cultivation also, there is a direct seeded rice, there is transplanted rice. There are various methods of cultivation of the rice. But this three method of rice cultivation is related to the irrigated rice. That means we are going to provide the irrigation to this crop. Okay. So this is the methodology. What kind of method is involved? This is the method involving the changing the management of the plants, soil, water and the nutrients. See now in the traditional method of rice cultivation, so farmers are uh, providing the nutrients, they are providing the water, they are you know using the high yielding varieties and all. So that is conventional method of cult rice cultivation. But this method involves modifications to that r cult uh, traditional method of rice cultivation. That is the changing the earlier ways of rice cultivation. What kind of changes will we do in this three method there will be the changes to the plant population there is a change to the water there is a change in the soil there is a change in the amount of nutrient application also so in this way it is a, it is a methodology and it is the this method involves the changes in the way we traditionally approach towards the rice cultivation this three is not a 
technology do not confuse this is not a technology this is just a you know evolving methodology every year so with the improvements this you know method of cultivation is gaining more and more predominance there are various improvements year after year so we have not reached the fine you know uh, point in this cultivation method okay still we are progressing towards the perfection of this method that is why this is not the technology okay then it is first developed in the country of madagascar yes madagascar island located in the east of the african continent in the indian ocean right in that con uh, island this sri method of cultivation started or the concept evolved in the 1980s already it is a 40 year old method of cultivation it was predominantly uh, you know confined to the madagascar island only but nowadays there are various countries across the world number of countries are adopting this methodology because this method is involving the water saving this involves the saving of the seed rate and it gives the lot of yield also because of these reasons this method of cultivation is gaining more and more importance and it is being adopted in the last uh, last number uh, sorry large number of countries okay so this gives equal or more pro produce than the conventional rice cultivation yes i said that because of it's you know uh, it's unique character of giving more yield than the conventional method so this is gaining more and more importance now how exactly is this method of rice cultivation different from the conventional method okay there are some four five characteristics that make the lot of difference between conventional method of rice cultivation and sri method of cultivation one is with respect to the spacing how much space we maintain between the plants so it is 15 by 10 cm that means 15 cm between the rows 10 cm between the plants okay this 15 cm is row to row spacing 10 cm is plant to plant spacing but in sri method we are you know practicing the square method of spacing that means between the plants and between the rows of the plants there will be the equal distance that is 25 cm by 25 cm then second you know particular is the number of plants per square meter how many numbers of plants will be there in one square meter of land so in conventional method there will be 66 plants per square meter but in sri method there will be only 16 plants that means there is a reduction of 50 plants per square meter in the sri method because here the spacing is more that is why number of plants is less then number of seedlings per hill hill means so the place where the seed is put this seed will generate the tillers or it will generate the seedlings how many seedlings this seed will give in the conventional method there in conventional method there will be three seedlings from one seed okay three plants from one seed in the conventional method but in the sri method there will be only one plant for per one hill or one plant per seed okay then that means again there is a reduction in the number of plants then number of plants per acre so if you multiply if you, you know magnify this number number of plants per square meter into number of plants per square uh, per acre it will be 79 so 7 lakh 92000 that means around 8 lakh plants per acre in the conventional method but in the sri method there will be around 64000 plants only there is a huge difference between the population of the plants per acre in the conventional method and in the sri method if you compare these two there will be very very less number of plants in the sri method of cultivation then seed requirement per acre how much seed is required to we have to sow the land or we have to transplant the land so for transplanting one acre of land how many seed rate is required how much seed rate re re is required so for in conventional method 20 kg of seeds are required but in sri method of cultivation only 2 kg of rice seeds are required that means again seed rate is too much because number of plants are less spacing is more okay so because of that seed rate is very very less in the sri method of cultivation these are the very very definable differences between the conventional method as well as the sri method of rice cultivation now before transplanting the seedlings into the mainland we have to raise the seedlings in the place called as the nursery nursery is nothing but the place or the demarcated space especially for the growing of the seedlings in their earlier stage i said the seedlings must be trans uh, transplanted into the mainland that means that the seed has to be sprouted the sprouted seed 
or when the seedling the when the seed germinates it will produce the plant that plant at a certain age has to be transplanted into the mainland okay for that we need to have one nursery okay or the place where the seeds are germinated so in this nursery for transplanting one acre of land we need to have 100 square meter nursery okay 100 square meter nursery will suffice or it will supply the required number of seedlings for one acre of land okay this is the nursery this is your main land okay two this is let us say this is one acre of land this is 100 square meter nursery so out of 100 square meter of nursery you can transplant the seedlings in one acre of land okay the how much seeds required i said two kg per acre two cultivate are true to transplant the seedlings into one acre of land we have to sow the seeds in this nursery that is two kg of seeds are required if you know sow the two kg of seeds in the nursery that is sufficient to, to transfer the seedlings for one acre of land then apply a layer of fine layer fine manure see after sowing the seeds in the nursery you have to apply the manures okay so then application of manures then again sprouted seeds are to be sown before you know sowing the seeds in the soil of the nursery you have to sprout the seeds you have to keep the seeds in water overnight after you know once the uh, seeds imbibe the water then they will start to germinate those germinated or sprouted seeds have to be sprinkled on the nursery bed area so then after you know, sprinkling the uh, these sprouts sprouted seeds again you have to apply the very thin layer of manure on the seedlings sorry these sprouted seeds then you have to cover the whole nursery into one mulch okay so this will uh, enhance the uh, growth of the plants as well as it will reduce the weed growth in the nursery area okay this is how you have to manage the nursery or this is how the nursery is managed in the three method of cultivation after this management of the nursery the seedlings will be transplanted into mainland now before going into the mainland aspects so this is how the nursery of the three cultivation looks like this is the nursery so these are the uh, different rows of di uh, rows of different sizes okay different this is how the nursery nurseries are maintained in this nursery the sprouted seeds are you know put after putting the seedlings again the manure is applied so after application uh, manure is applied the the whole nursery is covered with the mulch so after the seeds are properly germinated uh, once they start to root in the nursery area the water will be applied to take care of these seedlings the proper moisture is maintained in the soil okay this is how the nursery is maintained then coming to the main field so we have established the seedlings or we have sown the sprouted seeds in the nursery now before these plants are transplanted into the mainland the mainland has to be prepared very well right what kind of you know operations can be taken up in the main field that is land preparation this land preparation is not different from the conventional method of rice cultivation in the conventional method of rice cultivation this plowing the harrowing sorry harrowing flowing then puddling then leveling of the land and stagnation of the water takes place in the same way in the three method of cultivation also the same you know uh, operations are carried out so first one is plowing in the summer season they will go for plowing okay after plowing puddling that means the conditioning the soil in presence of the water that is the puddling then leveling this puddled soil will be properly leveled so that the water is properly uh, stagnated in the uh, area this extra water can be easily uh, you know uh, taken out or there it can be shown a direction to go out of the land see that's why you have to maintain the table top land okay that is leveled land then at every three meters of distance the small channels are opened so that if there is excess water in the field this water can be directed towards these channels and it will get the uh, way towards the main drainage okay then we, we have to draw the lines i said in the three method of cultivation there will be a spacing of 25 centimeter by 25 centimeter okay so to maintain this spacing we have to draw the lines like this so this is 25 centimeter to this is 25 centimeter after every 25 centimeters lines have to be drawn 
vertically as well as horizontally. On the well puddled soil, on the well leveled soil, we have to demarcate the lines like this so that we can we will get the square spacing that is so 25 centimeter by 25 centimeter. This is how the main land is prepared. So these are if you do not know if you are not from the rural background you can just you know watch this you know uh, uh, diagram you can get an idea what is the plowing is okay this is the bullock drawn flow this is the tractor uh, drawn flow okay this is mechanized way of flowing and this is the manual way of plowing this is called as the plowing that means just opening the soil for the sunlight or for proper aeration that is the plowing next comes after plowing the puddling is done in the flowed land the water is stagnated for some days okay once the soil becomes saturated with the water this soil will be cultivated with the tractors or with the bullock drawn implements okay this is called as the puddling that means proper mixing of mixing of the soil with the water so it will create the saturated soil it will it will create the very good seed bed for the uh, uh, seedlings to be transplanted in the mainland okay this is the puddling <coughs> After puddling, this is how the spacing is maintained. Now, after puddling, once the land is leveled, the seedlings will be transplanted from the nursery. In the nursery, we have sown the seeds. These seeds are germinated and these seeds have to be transplanted into the mainland. Once the very well prepared land is prepared, it looks like this. See, these are the lines. After every 25 centimeters, they have drawn the line. Okay, vertically as well as horizontally. At the intersection of these lines, they are going to transplant the seedlings okay so that is why the square spacing is maintained the single seedling with the square planting at 25 by 25 centimeter that means only one single seedling will be put in these places okay at the intersection of these lines the seedlings are put okay this is how the transplanting is done after transplantation okay see so what kind of seedlings have to be transplanted now i said nursery is ready in the nursery seedlings are ready these seedlings have to be transplanted into the mainland what kind of seedlings are selected how what should be their character usually the seedlings with the age of 14 days seedlings with the age of 14 days are selected for transplanting into the mainland okay so at this stage at the stage of 14 days seedling will have the three leaves Usually, if the nursery is very well maintained, if it is properly nourished, if the water uh, is managed very well in the nursery area, at the 14 days, the seedling will provide the three leaves. Okay, the, if the plant is three is having the three leaves, that plant is ready for transplantation. Okay, this is the three leaf stage of the plant. Okay, these all plants have the three leaves. These kind of plants can be transplanted into the mainland. Now, this is the different stages of the rice crop, okay. So this is the seed, just germinating seed. Now this is spr uh, sprouted, it is started to produce the roots. Now the shoot is coming up, okay. So all of these stages, they will take, the seed will cross the different stages. The stage, this stage can be achieved at the, this is the uh, four leaf stage, but before this, a uh, three leaf stage, uh, leaf seedling will be transplanted, that three leaves are arrived or they will take the 14 days time to you know produce three seed uh, sorry leaves okay these are the different stages of the rice crop now how much fertilizers we have to apply you know it very well that india you know requires lot of fertilizers to apply into the fields of uh, rice as well as the cotton rice and the cotton they are the pr uh, more and more fertilizer requiring crops okay but how these fertilizers are applied in the uh, three method of rice? See, one 12.5 tons of FYM or the compost. FYM is nothing but the farm aired manure. 12.5 tons of farm aired manure is applied or the compost is applied to the one acre of, sorry, one hectare of three method of rice uh, field okay or if the compost or the FIM is not available the green leaf manure can be applied or the manure made out of the green leaves of the plant okay 6.25 tons of green leaf manure per hectare is applied half the quantity of FIM okay because this green leaf manure contains the more nutrients compared to the compost okay that is why they are applied in the less quantity then 
organic manures are recommended in the Sri method of cultivation. This Sri method of cultivation is again beneficial because compared to the conventional method, this method requires very well less amount of fertilizer and it requires more and more organic fertilizers. That means the plant originated uh, waste material. So, because why these organic manures are you know uh, favored in this method? Because these you know manures they will supply the essential nutrients. This nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium and other micronutrients like calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, they are you know abundant in the organic manures. Okay, that is why these organic manures are you know preferable uh, preferable in this method then these organic manures will create the favorable conditions for the soil microbes soil is not a dead resource it is a living resource this resource harbors the various organisms called as the microorganisms these microorganisms are you know uh, very very helpful in you know mobilizing the nutrients or in fixing the nitrogen okay this microbial activity will be enhanced by application of the organic manures because these organic manures will provide the required carbon for these micro uh, microorganisms okay so because of these reasons the organic manures are preferable in the Sri method of cultivation. Then if the organic manures are not sufficient, you can go for the synthetic fertilizers. You can apply the synthetic fertilizers based on the soil test recommendations, right? See, the government of India has introduced the soil health cards because this health card will indicate the fertility of the soil, what is the deficient nutrient in the soil and all, okay? So based on these soil test recommendations of the soil scientist, you can apply the nutrients in the three method of uh, cultivation. Then the nitrogen can be applied through the leaf color chart. So there is a new technology called the leaf color chart based on the color of the leaf okay uh, in the chart you can go for the application of the nitrogen especially the nitrogen okay so this is how the leaf color chart looks like okay so this is the dark green this is the very light green okay this light green indicates that there is a deficiency of the nitrogen okay if the leaf you know if the leaf color is you know very light green or uh, light green that indicates that it requires more and more nitrogen based on this indication of the this leaf color chart you can go for the application of the nitrogen into the field in the three method of rice cultivation then apart from uh, nutrient management there are concepts like irrigation management as well as the weed management and water management okay the purpose of irrigation this three method of rice cultivation unlike the conventional method requires very very less amount of water okay see here the purpose of irrigation or the purpose of providing the water to this field is just to maintain the soil uh, wet that means just to wet the soil we are not going to saturate the soil we are not stagnating the water in the three method of field okay we, the purpose is just to wet the soil the subsequent irrigations if you provide the irrigation once, the next irrigation can be applied only when the soil develops the fine cracks. Until the soil develops the cracks, this crack happens because when there is a deficiency of the water, this will lead to the uh, split in the soil particles. Once there is a cracks in the soil, then you can go for the application of the water okay, or the irrigation. That means we you are supplying the water based on the need of the crop. You are not unnecessarily providing the water unlike the a conventional method of rice cultivation then regular wetting and drying of the soil results in see if you regularly wet this soil and if you leave it uh, if you allow the soil for drying this alternate drying and wetting results in the <coughs> increased microbial activity in the soil okay if you stagnate the water for the long time it will reduce the microbial activity because they, it will lead to the anaerobic conditions under anaerobic conditions microorganisms will not survive okay if there is a proper aeration if there is alternate drying and wetting it will enhance the microbial activity in the soil then it will easily make nutrients available okay then adequate aeration during the vegetative phase the during the vegetative phase for the proper development of the root system there must be proper aeration in the soil okay this alternate wetting and dry will drying will enhance the proper aeration in the soil so because of this the regular wetting and drying of the land is practiced in the Sri method of cultivation at any stage at any given stage of this crop the water is not allowed to stagnate okay no water stagnation at any stage this is a very very important point in this three method of cultivation 
then weed management after irrigation the weed management becomes the very very important concept because this is the dry seeded rice or the land is dry alternately it is drying and wetting this will enhance the weed growth also or weed is nothing but the unwanted uh, plant in the cropped area okay so this we have to remove these unwanted plants otherwise these weeds will take up the nutrients or the water from the land this will make the main crop deprived from the water and the nutrients so that is why we have to remove these weeds so in this three method of cultivation there is a one unique um, implement called as the cono weeder this cono weeder looks like this this is the manually operated implement okay here the farmers are you know uh, removing the weeds by using the cono weeder here this is what the cono weeder is okay so this is the very very particular implement or the very unique implement in the sri method of rice cultivation so absence of standing water leads to the more weed growth see in the stagnating water as i said so uh, it, there will be less you know uh, opportunity for the weeds to grow but in the dry method of uh, rice cultivation it will enhance the weed growth because there is a proper aeration and proper nutrient availability by the uh, green manures or the fym okay so it will enhance the weed growth these weeds have to be removed after every 10 uh, 10 days okay immediately after you know establishment of the crop in the field after every 10 or 12 days you have to take up the weeding by using the cono weeder okay square planting see so this is how we have sown our crop right so this cono weeder can be operated horizontally or vertically or in the both the both the direction that means the proper weeding the there is no scope for any of the weed to emerge or to grow further in this field but if you, you know uh, operate the cono weeder in both the directions okay horizontally or vertically so this is how the weeds are very very well managed because spacing is more there is no harm for the crop okay the weeds are easily suppressed by using the cono weeder then now we have seen the cultivation method of this three method of rice cultivation or the system of rice intensification i i also said that it was you know confined to the confined to the country of madagascar now this method is being adopted by various countries what are the advantages given by this methodology okay let us look into that it is suitable for all types of soil whether it is a dry uh, black soil or red soil or loamy soil or silty soil for all the kind of soils this method is very well suited okay it will give the higher yields compared to the uh, conventional method of rice cultivation and it will take very less duration 10 days are saved see if the main crop in the conventional method if the crop is taking uh, let us say 90 to 100 days this three method of cultivation takes only 80 days to complete the life cycle because the seedlings are already spent their lifespan in the nursery okay we are transplanting the seedlings from the nursery area that in the nursery also they will take very short duration because we are transplanting uh, the seedlings of very 14 uh, days old okay in the mainland also they require very uh, short time to establish themselves okay in that way lot of time is saved around 10 days of you know uh, season or the during the growing period 10 days are reduced okay then they require the less chemical inputs as i said these require lot of green manures fym and the compost okay if at all these organic manures are not sufficient then only you can go for the synthetic fertilizers otherwise these synthetic fertilizers are not required in that way this is the uh, this method involves very less uh, chemical inputs then less water also because we are alternately providing the irrigation that means only when the soil develops the cracks then only we are providing the irrigation compared to the conventional method so in that way it requires very very less amount of water but if you grow the rice in this way grain weight will be more grain size and the weight will be more okay that the test weight that means the weight of 100 seeds it will be more that means it is giving very good quality of the uh, grains soil health improves because of the application of the green manures because of the increased microbial activity definitely there will be improved soil health then it will save the seed requirement also this uh, method requires only 2 kg of seeds per acre sorry uh, yes per acre okay but the conventional method of rice cultivation requires 20 kgs right 10 times less quantity of seeds are required this is again a major advantage reduction in the nursery area so only 100 square meter of 
nursery is required for one acre of mainland transplantation okay the nursery area is also required uh, less so increased tillering tillering means see these these are what the tillers okay individual you know uh, branch in this plant it is called as the tiller so every seedling will produce more and more seedlings more seedling means more panicles that means more and more grains okay this is three method enhances the tillering process more tiller means more panicles and more panicles means more yield okay so this is again the advantage profuse root system because more space is available for the root activity the root growth will be profuse okay it will enhance the more and more water uptake and it, it will provide the more and more strength to the uh, crop also because of the very good root system because of the increased tillers with the more strength the lodging will be less lodging means falling down of the uh, these plants the plants will not fall down okay so again uh, this uh, this is uh, this is again a major advantage less lodging then less incidence of pests and diseases so in the conventional method when we apply more and more nitrogenous fertilizers these nitrogenous fertilizers the plants having more new nitrogen content they will attract the pests and the diseases very easily okay it is a stag in the conventional method it is a stagnating water this stagnating water will provide the harbor for the uh, insects to lay the eggs also so it will create the microclimate it will be you know uh, very what do you call humid condition in the wetland uh, rice cultivation okay this humid condition will attract the pests and the diseases but this problem can be avoided in the sri method of cultivation this is again a major advantage in the sri method of cultivation ultimately there will be the high net profit because we are harvesting more crop in the same unit of land compared to the uh, conventional method right so ultimately it will give the higher profit high net profit because of all these advantages this method is gaining more and more traction in india and other countries then we have to look at the constraints also what are the disadvantages associated with this method of cultivation they are strict water controls are required so you cannot stagnate the water you cannot forget once you apply the water you cannot forget you have to take care of the land you have to ensure that there is again a dryness in the field then only proper aeration can happen okay so proper visual is required on the water requirement then it is not suitable when there is no irrigation yes v the farmer if he doesn't have the irrigation facility if it is a dry land there this method cannot can be it cannot be uh, employed okay so it is applicable only in the irrigated areas then it requires greater skill for the transplanting so when we transplant the seedlings at the 14 days while transplanting the seedlings you have to take care that these seedlings are not exposed to the uh, harms or they are not exposed to the any shocks Tra it is called as the transplanting shock okay you have to take care okay it is a special skill required by the farmers then weed menace is more because it is alternately uh, the soil is alternately dying and uh, drying and wetting it will provide it will enhance or it will facilitate the weed growth so again weed will become the major problem unlike the conventional method then it is labor intensive for transplanting for laying of the lines for proper uh, puddling or for flowing different operations are required right all these operations require lot of labor compared to the conventional method of rice cultivation then the traditional mindset of the farmers the farmers will not employ this method because they will think that the only conventional method of rice cultivation will give them more and more profit they, it will give more and more yields so this is the traditional mindset of the farmers this mindset has to be changed again uh, that mindset is a barrier for propagation of this method of rice cultivation okay so the governments are the the agricultural scientists they have to take the pro, you know special care to uh, propagate this uh, method or to popularize this method so that we can save a lot of water we can save a lot of seeds we can save a lot of nutrients also in that way we we are you know properly economically uh, using our natural resources and it will lead to the sustainable development also right for sustainable development this three method of rice cultivation is very well suited and it has to be uh, promoted in a larger scale okay this is what is the rice method sorry three method of rice cultivation that is system of rice intensification so there was a question in the recently concluded upsc preliminary exam regarding this three method of rice cultivation what were the advantages of this method so please can you write some of the advantages whatever the advantages i have not mentioned in these slides can you mention some of the advantages in the comment box below 
Okay, this is what is the three method of cultivation. Thank you very much for watching this video.